Hello friends, a very good morning to each and every one of you. This week I'll be making a series of lecture videos on Aristotle. We will try to complete the unit on Aristotle within this week. And every day I'll be making 10 to 15 minutes video and will be uploading here in this channel and at the same time I'll be sharing the link in our WhatsApp group so I request every one of you to visit the link every day so that we will be able to complete the syllabus for this semester as for today we'll be discussing about a short introduction on the life of Aristotle. This will be the first lecture of the series on Aristotle. In this particular video, we will discuss a little bit about Aristotle as in the, uh, in the form of introduction. Then, the main part that is his life and will come to his writings and finally a brief conclusion so it will be very short it will be about 10 to 15 minutes I hope you will be with me to begin with Aristotle was a genius well worse in a number of disciplines like aesthetics biology ethics, logic, physics, politics, psychology, and many other subjects, all disciplines. In other words, Aristotle was a Greek philosopher and polymath. He was the greatest systematic philosopher of ancient Greece. Aristotle was a good speaker, had a great sense of humor, and extremely persuasive in conversation. In other words, he was a good orator or he had a very good speaking skill. Aristotle is regarded as the pioneer or father of many disciplines, particularly political science. Now let's come to his life. Aristotle was born in 384 BC at Stegra, which is in the northern part of Greece. The name of his father was Nicomachus, a doctor, and his mother was Fertis. His father, Nicomachus, was a physician at the court of King Amintas III. So, a longer part of his boyhood or his childhood was spent in the royal seat of Macedonia, which is at Pella. Because of his descent from a medical family, it can well be imagined that Aristotle must have read a lot on medicine and must have developed interest in physical sciences, particularly biology. In 367 BC, when he was 17 years of age, Aristotle joined Plato's academy in Athens and remained there for 20 years, first as a student or pupil and later as a teacher or member of faculty till about 348 BC. When Plato passed away, when his teacher Plato had died, Aristotle wanted to succeed the academy. However, there were other competitors as well. Those were Spelsupas and Genocrates. 
After a brief struggle between these three, finally the academy was handed over to Speusippus, who was Plato's nephew. So, after he was not able to get the in charge of academy, Aristotle left Greece for Asia Minor, where he met his old friend and an active politician called Hippia. And later on, he married his niece. Meaning to say, Aristotle married the niece of Hippia while he was in Asia Minor. During his visit to Asia Minor, he developed an interest in natural sciences, particularly biology and other disciplines. In 343 BC, Aristotle was invited and accepted an offer to tutor the son of Philip of Macedon named Alexander, who was 14 years by that time. Philip was a close friend of Hippia, so through Hippia, he was able to get an offer to tutor his young son Alexander to become a great ruler or a great philosopher. But when Alexander be became the emperor in 336 BC, after his father was assassinated, he no longer had enough time to learn or to study, and thereby Aristotle had to return to Athens. Later, Aristotle had the opportunity to study a large number of biological specimens from different parts of the world with the help of his students. And it is said that many of these specimens were sent by his former student, Alexander. In 335 BC, after the death of Spelsippus, the successor of Plato, Aristotle hoped to get the charge of academy, but he was overlooked in favor of Xenocrates, who succeeded as the head of the academy. So one possible reason why Aristotle, in spite of being the best pupil of Plato, was not given the opportunity to head the academy was then. Unlike Plato, Aristotle was not an Athenian by birth because he was born in Stagira, which is in the northern side of or northern part of Greece. In other words, Aristotle was not a pure Athenian by birth. So usually, they prefer an Athenian to head such prestigious academy. So after he was not given the opportunity to succeed Plato, he established his own school in the Lyceum in about 335 or 334 BC. In Lyceum, Aristotle pursued his studies in biology, history, and many others. He also collected and studied about 158 constitutions, many of them, as we have mentioned before, with the help of his students. Now, it was in his own school or in his own institution called the Lyceum that most of his books were written.
After a few years, Aristotle's relationship with Alexander got strained when one of his philosopher, philosopher friends, Callistians, accused Alexander of becoming an Oriental monarch and was subsequently killed for being too critical to Alexander the Great. But fortunately or unfortunately, Alexander passed away in 323 BC. And as soon as he passed away, Athens declared war on Macedonia. When Athens declared war on Macedonia, Aristotle was scared for his life and leave Athens to curses. He was not only scared for his life, but he said that he was also denying Athens a second chance to commit a crime against philosophy by escaping from it because he remembered that Socrates was also executed in Athens for criticizing the government. He let us remember that since Aristotle had taught Alexander for several years, he was apprehensive that after the death of Alexander, the government of Athens were accused of helping an enemy. So after he withdrew to Curses in Euboea, he died in 322 BC when he was 62 years on account of chronic indigestion rendered acute by overwork as certified by his own personal physician or doctor. Now let's come to Aristotle's writings. Aristotle is believed to have written close to 150 books. It is not sure exactly how many books he have written, but it is believed that he have written so many books. His writings well in diverse fields. That means in various disciplines. However, most of his writings were laws and only about 20% is believed to have survived. His works include a work on arts, astronomy, biology, botany, chemistry, constitutional history, epistemology, ethics, intellectual history, language, law, logic, mathematics, mechanics, metaphysics, natural history, physiology, politics, psychology, geology, and others. In other words, as a polymath, Aristotle was able to write in all the knowledge, field of knowledge, none during his time. However, he was able to lay the basis for the subsequent development of its disciplines that he had dealt with. When it comes to politics, for Aristotle, it is the master science and art, for it determined the ordering of the sciences to be studied in a state by every class of citizen. Within the ambit of politics came subjects like military science, economics, medicine, etc., which assume meaning by focusing on the primary or general good of humans. In other words, according to Aristotle, politics includes those subjects which focus primarily on the good or betterment or happiness of 
human beings. His writings are classified under three headings, dialogues, collections of facts, and finally, systematic works. It is said that many of his writings were not in the form of systematic works, but sort of dialogue between popular character, or it is sort of a drama type. And the other groups were collection of facts and materials from scientific treatment or experiment. However, there are also some other systematic works as well. Among his books, some of the most well-known well, number one, Politics, which is uh, till that one of the most influential books in political science. Then, Nicomachean Ethics and Eudemian Ethics. These are more to do with philosophy, but most of his political philosophies are taken out from politics along with Nicomachean Ethics. Conclusion Aristotle's political theory is found mainly in the politics, which is his most important works, although there are also references of the political thought in the Nicomachean Ethics. The main theme of politics his most important work was the police, or the city-state, an institution that was unique to the 5th century BC. There was a detailed examination of the nature of the state and its origins, an analysis of the either state and the different constitutions of actual states, the concept of citizenship, law, constitutions, and others. The politics, his, his most famous books, embodies Aristotle's conclusions from a study of the history and development of 158 constitutions or more. Though the constitution of Athens alone survived. Aristotle's politics has served as a foundation work for the whole of Western tradition after his time and even till that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening. And with this short lecture, we come to the end of the first lecture series on Aristotle. And in the next lecture, we will discuss Aristotle and Plato, their similarities and differences. Thank you so much.